Journey to the Cross, Day 14 One of the scariest, most destructive aspects of sin is its ability not only to blind us, but to blind us to our blindness. I fell into the trap once again. I didn't see it coming, and I didn't know what was happening until after the fact. I am sure I am not alone in this. I am persuaded it happens to us more often than we realize. It makes us closed, self-protective, and defensive. It prevents us from learning and growing. It weakens our receptivity to preaching and the ministry of of the body of Christ. It makes us rather hard to live with and unapproachable. I was tempted once again to believe something that is not true, to accept it unchallenged and to act upon it. It didn't go well in the moment and it would have done me harm if God hadn't met me by his grace and opened my eyes. A dear friend asked to see me and when we met, He confronted me about my attitude in an email conversation. I was defensive because I fell into the trap that so many of us fall into. We succumb to believing that no one knows us better than we know ourselves. There is no more dangerous aspect of sin's deceitfulness than this one. It will close you off from the insight-giving ministry of God's word. It will cause you to resist divine conviction and it will shut you off from the essential sanctifying ministry of the body of Christ. There is no more destructive delusion than this one. You see, if sin blinds, and it does, see Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 to 13, then I will not have an accurate view of myself as long as there is sin remaining in me. The remaining deceitfulness creates pockets of personal spiritual blindness that will result in functional inaccuracies in the way I see, examine, assess myself. This results in thinking I am more righteous, mature, consistent, or godly than I actually am. Because there is sin of thought, desire, attitude, word, or action that I do not see or assess properly. Now, if I think that no one knows me better than I know myself, and you come to me confronting me with something I haven't seen, I feel no guilt in rejecting what you have to say about me. In fact, I will feel hurt that you have misjudged me in this way. Rather than feeling loved by you and by God, and helped by you and God to grow in insight and maturity, I will feel wrongly condemned. Your ministry to me, rather than being hope-giving, will be seen as an affront. And if this happens repeatedly, well, there won't be much relationship left between us. I will walk away thinking that wrongful accusations ended our relationship when really you were attempting to do for me exactly what I and everyone else need. All this happens because sin not only blinds us, but it also blinds us to our blindness. We think we see clearly when we don't. We think we know ourselves when in fact we don't know ourselves as well as we think we do. We think that we're open to God and to the ministry of others, when we can be way more defensive than we realize. We think we are approachable, but we quickly get argumentative when we are accused of something that is outside the field of our own self-knowledge. We fall easily into this trap of delusion, assuming that we know ourselves better than anyone else does or ever will. Today, there will be thousands and thousands of conversations that have become awkward, uncomfortable, and derailed because of what I have just described. Many of us resist the loving, correcting, and protecting, convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit, but we do not know it. Many of us say we love the church, but we are functionally not open, not approachable, and not humbly ready to listen when we are confronted by what we have not seen or do not know about ourselves. So I want to encourage you to do something new during this Lenten season. Take some time to confess your blindness and pray for grace to see. Admit to God and others there have been times when you have been less open and approachable. Forsake forever the belief that no one knows you better than yourself. Pray for the willingness to benefit from the confronting love of others. Go to the principal people in your life and ask them to help you see what you probably wouldn't see without them. And take some time to celebrate that your Savior of grace won't leave you to your blindness now and that the day is coming when your blindness will forever end.